one part that is important in um, decision making um, process is whether or not we are talking about multiple objective decision making or multiple attribute decision making. The example that I have provided earlier are pretty straightforward when you're talking about multiple attribute decision making. So for instance, when you purchase an apartment or rent an apartment, you have different attributes and you're trying to make a decision based on how you score on these attributes. Multiple objective is slightly different and we have talked about this especially in reserve design for instance, where one objective might be to maximize the biodiversity while the other objective might be to minimize the cost. Now, some of these objectives could of course be set into constraint uh, as we have seen earlier, but it is not uncommon in spatial optimization to have multiple objectives. Now, let's just try to look look at different uh, components here of a decision-making process for the MODM and the MADM. Okay, so the first one is, are the objectives clearly defined? So in the case of a multiple objective decision-making, those are explicitly defined, of course. So for instance, we want to minimize the cost, we want to maximize biodiversity, while for the um, 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 sorry, multiple attribute decision making, those are implicit. So we don't directly say we want to minimize the cost, for instance, right? Um, but uh, the rent of an apartment is implicitly stated in our decision. The attributes are implicitly defined in the uh, multiple objective decision making, um, but they are explicit in the multiple attributes, right? So when we purchase the apartment, we have all these attributes that uh, are coming into account. Um, in terms of constraints, those are explicitly defined in multiple objective and implicitly defined in the multiple attributes. Okay? Uh, in terms of the alternative, those are implicit for the multiple objective and they are explicit for the multiple attributes. As we have seen, we had the different uh, attributes and we had different alternatives. The number of alternatives for multiple objective problems are infinite, They're very large, as you know uh, from some of the exercises that we have done with the p-median, the maximum covering location problem, and other uh, models like a dispersion, we can have a really large number of feasible solutions. While actually for multiple attribute decision making, it's relatively small, it's finite. So again, looking at, for instance, uh, a car, an apartment, a house, and so on, usually we're not taking into account millions of different solutions, unlike for multiple objective problems. The control of the decision maker is significant in multiple objective, but it's limited in multiple attribute. And it's actually quite limited even in multiple attribute when we have multiple uh, people who want to make a decision, like multiple stakeholders. And finally, in terms of decision modeling paradigm, it is more of a process oriented in a multiple objective and it's more of an outcome oriented for multiple attribute decision making.